Let's make a custom item model. Alright, we find ourselves back in Blockbench once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be making a custom item model for the Java edition of Minecraft. So for our Minecraft mod, let's go into the new Java block item. And we're just going to call this the Kauten Sword. So let's just make a custom sword one. This is going to be awesome. So just confirm and there we go. So we've already previously seen the basic controls of Blockbench. So hopefully you can remember those. Otherwise, I will link the previous tutorial in the top right corner. And let's just add a cube over here and let's just start. So I basically want to have, you know, a pretty cool sword over here. So let's just make the hilt like something like this maybe. And then duplicate this. I can duplicate the actual cube if I selected Control D to duplicate. Or you can also right click duplicate. So you can see there's quite a few things that you can, you know, change here as well. And then let's just move this one up, make this a little bit smaller, you know, make a guard over here. There we go. And then let's see, let's duplicate this one again. And let's get a, you know, rough sword over here. So we're gonna have something like this. Maybe I want to make this a little bit smaller. So maybe I want to, you know, reduce the size in this direction. So if I hold shift, you know, instead of, you know, it decreasing by one, I can actually decrease it by only 0.25. So now you can see I now have a little bit of a flatter sword in this case. Maybe I want this to decrease a little bit more and then duplicate this again. Maybe I would then want this to maybe also be a little bit smaller, but then also go smaller in this direction as well. So something like this. And let's make this a little bit smaller even. So once again, while holding shift, and you can see now it's actually just paper thin. That is actually a little bit too thin for my taste. So maybe this is going to be 0.25 over here, but now I just need to move it. So once again, I can hold the shift key to basically, well, make it move in 0.5 increments. But you can see the 0.25 increments are actually not quite what I want. I actually want even lower ones. So sometimes you just have to play around with the numbers here as well. So this is going to be between 8.5 and 8.25, you can see. So this should be, in theory, 8.375. And there we go. Now it should be centered as well. And you can see, there we go. Now, I actually think that let's make this a little bit smaller and make this a little bit bigger. And there we go. Now we have our crazy cool sword. Now, don't disparage my modeling capabilities too much. I know that it's not the greatest thing you've ever seen. However, it hopefully highlights some of the examples of things that you can do. Let's paint this thing. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each cube individually and we're going to make a, you know, custom texture. So hilt texture over here. This is going to be the top sword texture, confirm. And then this is going to be the bottom sword texture, bottom sword texture. And then this is going to be the, this is actually not the hilt, this is the guard texture. And then this is going to be the hilt texture. And now we can go into the paint and just paint this in a really cool color. So let's just say maybe it's going to be like a sort of a yellow for the blade itself. I'm just going to color it first of all, and then we're going to see like adding some shades basically in after I've colored everything. You also have some different tools here. You can use a paint bucket and then it's going to fill in basically all of the different faces that are connected here. Let's get a brown here for the hilt, maybe something like that for the time being. Absolutely. And then the guard. Let's just make this a boring old gray color maybe. There we go. And now we have everything modeled here so we can actually take a look at this. And of course, you know, it is nothing too crazy at the moment. But if you saw this in Minecraft, you would definitely say, well, this is definitely custom. I actually don't like that the hilt is so big. So let's just decrease this a little bit. I'm just going to hold shift once again and then just making sure that this is also going to be centered over here. You can make this move by 0.1 if you hold control instead of 0.25. So you can also hold control and then make this move a little bit less. So now it should be centered as well. You can also look at this in other from other directions by using the thing here in the bottom left. You can basically look at this from the side, you know, then from the bottom, from the top with the Y, there you go. So you can basically also see this. If you want to get out of this mode, then you just have to drag the actual circle over here to get out of this mode and then you can move freely once more. But I think that this is probably already pretty good. Like I said, my texturing and modeling skills are definitely not the best. This is once again, just an example for you to basically, well, see how this might work. And then the most important bit is actually the display, because now we can go to the display and we can make this display differently. Well, if the player is holding it in the right hand and the left hand and all sorts of crazy things. So you can see we also have the you know move tool over here so we can just move this we can also change the numbers over here on the left but i'm just going to move this we're going to make this maybe by 1.5 bigger in all directions that's going to be a really really big sword there we go so that's actually pretty awesome let's make this a little bit higher up so maybe even a five would work let's see five i think is definitely a little bit too much so maybe a 
4.5 is going to be great. So there we go. Now the sword is actually in the player's hand looking like this. And those are the general numbers. If we now go into third person left, we can just, you know, get those numbers in here. 0.4.5 was it? This was 0 0.75. If I don't recall correctly, this was 1.5 for all of them. So we're just going to add this in here. 1.5 and 1.5. Right, so now in both the offhand as well as the main hand, it's going to look like this. In the first person, it's going to look like this. Not that interesting. So let's just move it around a little bit. And now this looks a little bit more interesting, I would say. So that's 1.5. Let's actually make this make this 3 and let's make this 1.5. There you go. So we can do the same thing here. 1.5 and then a 3 right here. And then it's going to look very, very similar. As you can see, on the head, you know, usually the head, I don't really think that this is necessary because usually you don't want your custom items to be on the head anyway. So maybe like something like this or maybe like a last unicorn over here. Add some rotation as well. <laughs> that could be really fun. There you go. So now you have a last unicorn sword as well. On the ground, I think this is really cool that you can change this as well. So I usually add a rotation in here. All right, so let's just make it actually 90 degree rotation in this side. And then this actually looks really awesome. Let's see so that it doesn't go too far into the ground. Basically, that's always what I want to do. And there we go. Now, this looks really awesome when it's actually thrown on the ground. You can make this a little bit smaller, maybe, or maybe even a little bit bigger if you, you know, depending on what you desire, basically. I find that, you know, making it a little bit smaller makes it a little bit more of an item, quote unquote, because the items usually are not as big as the actual block they're on. And then also in the frame, so we can change this around as well. Make this protrude out a little bit more and then just rotate around this axis and then have something like this. Maybe let's do it uh, minus 45 degrees, actually minus 45 degrees. There we go. I think that is pretty awesome inside of the item frame. And then it's also going to be in the GUI. So that we're going to do a similar thing, minus 45. Oh, here we actually do what? Plus 45. And maybe we want to rotate it around like a little bit in either, both the other directions as well. So it looks a little bit cooler in the inventory as well. Maybe we want to scale it up or scale it down, you know. Let's do like a 0.15 over here, maybe in all directions. Move it around a little bit. And there we go. So now we also have a very, very cool thing inside of the inventory as well. Now the display is basically done as well. And this is always going to be the way that it's going to display be displayed in, well, in your inventory, in the frames, on the ground, and all sorts of that. That is all done in the model file basically. If you want to save this, let's go to file and then save save project over here. And we're just going to save the BB model file first and foremost. So the save project is going to save, as you can see, the current model file. If we then save the model over here, it's also going to save a JSON file. That's very important as well as all of the textures as well. If you hit save model for the first time, then it's going to save all of the textures as well. You can also save the textures by just doing save as, and then it's going to also prompt you to, well, basically save the text over here and then what's also very important is you go to file export export block item model and this is going to basically export the json file so let's just see the count and sort json file let's save this and then let's actually take a look at that so for the people who have already seen some model files right some some model files you're going to be familiar with his textures over here, but the rest is basically going to be pretty crazy. So this is basically just the item model JSON file for this particular item. And it's going to do all of the crazy things for us, right? So all of the elements over here, all of the display over here, all of this is going to be interpreted as a custom item model. Once we're in our IntelliJ product, we just have to change the textures over here, making sure that those point to the correct folder, of course, and to the correct texture name, but that is literally all that we're going to need to change in that case. So pretty cool indeed. That's going to be one example of making a custom item. Next time we're going to make a custom block model and we're going to see how that works as well. Until then, hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next video. So yeah.